All right. Let's break down tracks. Let's break this thing down. As you're most likely familiar with, I do release music. So this is an older track titled Brittle. B-R-I-T-T-L-E. Uh, it started out almost at this point, almost seven years ago. And I did a little skit for, for Culprit's stream for him to review it there. As he did those like track reviews things. Uh, people really liked it. And I promised to finish it and I never did. And it took me a while. Uh, right, so in those seven years, things have changed. I have changed and this track has changed. So for me, it was tricky to redo it as I liked it and, and other people. It's not that they had expectations, but I wanted to keep the thing that got them into it. Um, I wanted to keep it, but as well to give it a, a new twist. The main difference is... I guess the way it develops and the exclusion or the uh, I didn't uh, put in this pad part. Oh, oh okay. Uh, 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 um. Yep. So this one, this thing here. This is cool, but I didn't, I just, I didn't want, I didn't want this vibe. Uh, and the pad thing started out, um, out of this. Strong vibes. Uh, okay. Strong vibes. Uh, the pad was created by chopping out this thing and just reverbing it. But again, uh, the initial spark. I'm recording. Yes. So the initial spark for this track was again, I wanted to make it for the culprit stream, but. I watched the Fortet uh, track breakdown video that he did for Computer Music Magazine. And I made this little loop with the Lounge Lizard. You're most likely familiar with that plugin either way. So I made this using x -verse Cthulhu, the sequencer and Lounge Lizard. So I cut out this thing into this offbeat pattern. Okay, so there, there's a lot of things to go through and a lot of processing in this thing. Uh, I'll go from up to down and try to do it as quickly as possible as this is most likely going to be a longer one. Okay, so uh, I have this group here. There's nothing, yeah, not really. It was mostly for organizational purposes. So I have this thing that I accidentally didn't use, but I know I was struggling how to incorporate it into the mix as the thing is very dense with elements and stuff and happenings and so in this part here it still makes sense but 
uh yeah the plugins here and the chain you see here uh is me it's me mainly trying to address uh, how to fit this into the mix uh cabinets are really cool with this as they kind of give a tone and differentiate the element they put it into into a space and so they're very useful for for this uh i found this waves one knob driver thing to be to have a similar similar thing as well of course reverbs but i didn't end up using it and i think it was by accident and it still works um, I have this hat loop. Okay. Without anything, and let me remove gain. As it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we have utilities for stereo purposes and this these were most likely added afterwards for mixing mm, yeah I tamed a bit of the highs and this H delay is I think I'm trying to give it some form of stereo though I usually try and avoid uh, adding in has effect stereos uh, so basically offsetting each channel by uh, different millisecond values and so you give the illusion of stereo but you have issues with uh, mono summing so summing the thing into mono as they cancel each other out and so i usually uh i i try and avoid that uh but what's giving this thing the tone that it's giving it is I w this gu guitar rig preset and so I hope you're not um, hearing my dog right so with that so again uh, I got to this preset by as I felt very stuck with the track and so when I get stuck I, c I mess around I usually just chug chug something on a master uh, and go through presets, go through sounds, and somehow, uh, you know, things pop, things pop out. Um, you, I end up, I usually end up uh, figuring out what, like, what's uh, getting my attention with, like, with the whole thing being processed, and it's usually I, I, I then just take the effect or processing that it was on the master and I put it onto uh, onto individual channels with like individual amounts dep like dependent on, on what I want to keep from the older part and this was this was the this was the same situation here okay so yeah here I this is dirty monster drum loop so it's an EQ this is I think this is an amp simulation or gratifier i'm not sure but it's i'm pretty sure it's an amp simulation and this gate that's giving this thing a very like very strong transient it's very getting very squashed All right so it's the tube compressor like the combination of these two and this monos it up as well I think you could put it to stereo but i don't think it, it preserves the original stereo it kind of i think it does the actually the house effect where it somehow um it's not really mono compatible so yeah but don't don't take my word for it okay uh the hats uh here as well so i have these groups here let me sip the coffee uh Okay. So a lot of micro edits, uh, and th that's a thing that's that I have to mention. There are a lot of little edits here, you know, to make the thing 
interesting and nailing them. I don't know. Uh, I used to do them a lot and I used to do music with them, but uh, I don't know. It's it's not really my workflow now or, or I don't know what is it or it, it's, I guess it's demanding for me Cognitive or whatever, but I don't know. I I just don't. I can't really do them as I as I as I used to. So, um, this group, I have the this thing here. Yeah. So, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I wanted this track to be more focused around that initial arpeggiated loop that we had and as the thing progresses this this thing uh it takes the lead in the track and this is the same loop you know th that i showed earlier but it's getting pulled uh, pushed through the same and this is this was one of the things that that were that was uh yeah grabbing my attention when i when i put it on the master and it's it's pretty cool as this noise gate kind of it has a certain threshold that it recognizes thing for it to you know to for it to activate and it pulled out some cool things from this initial arp thing and in combination so you see me here um i'm automating the yeah so the gratifier at points no i'm not okay so the spring reverb and the wet amount i mean it's arbitrary for you as but uh, that's what's happening there uh i put a reverb here to kind of make it a bit more wet as without it it's stood i think it w okay without it right um, you could say it's subtle, but it's not really a subtle difference, uh, as it sticks out in the mix, you know, with with like, and and that's a whole other topic about dimension or like early late reflections and and, and stuff like that. Uh, I have a bit of Kramer tape. I, I I use it as it's a really cool and non non like obvious intrusive way of rounding up things and and saturating them. Uh, a bit of uh, compression here, as it kind of. So you can hear how it's affecting and, and the spring, spring reverb getting activated. Uh, I, messed I messed around in the intro with the arbor. Right, it gives it this pumping effect. As I wanted it to be a bit, uh, I wanted it to uh, bit, uh, be a bit dialed back and not too upfront. And so, you know, reverbs and that sort of stuff are, are cool for introducing things and and I, I wanted like you know slowly progressing stuff from like from the back up up front all right um i have this base no okay nothing base <laughs> So in the initial version, I used, uh, I'm pretty sure this wasn't my bass. It was, um, if you were following my work, you're most likely familiar with the NeuroHub, old NeuroHub forum. And there was this really cool bass pack or actually, right. This is, this is but the ones that I love the most were the like the way the thing 
just destroyed his stuff and 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 the sound the stuff he made was always brilliant and and yeah so i used his basses uh i had ideas of doing the actually this is only a reverb here and i really love this octaverb the way it sounds but i ended up using the the dry stuff and i used this waves real plugin as it right it gives it this slowly uh slowly developing flanger thing that offsets the whole thing and and it's really useful for positioning stuff in the mix as well as yeah i, I wanted so i didn't want this to have to grab the listener's attention as it's usually something that's right that's focused on in the middle that's you know a bit more dry that's the thing that's that you're going to gravitate towards to so that's usually the place for vocals and you know uh and so here as you know as as i mentioned earlier as this thing develops i wanted to push this a bit back and so this thing is is cool for that uh honestly i just go through presets and and and, and listen to for what's good clap okay mm. so this is i'm side chaining this to most likely to yeah to this kick this is a kick that's a ghost kick <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll explain that later. Uh, it's getting side chains, so it, as there are some rhythmic parts where they collide, and this needs like this ghost kick, uh, like actually that part needed to be accentuated, and so I uh, I side chain that. Oh, I think I'm channel. I'm not sure if I'm even using. The, oh, so this is for the last hit. You'd say it's not, but it is important. Um, pushing mids here. Right. Mids, important. Uh, I think I tried to s map it to something here, but I didn't end up using it. Rounding it up here with this Kramer, and I really love this, this compressor. Mm. A bit, uh, uh, you can see there's 2 dB of gain reduction here, a bit of a rounder side chain part here with the kick, but still that stuff makes a difference. Mm, I have this shredder here as this stem has a vocal. Okay. So this real plugin that I mentioned earlier and right and with it nice uh i use this echo cat again. again a preset but it gives it a syncopation mm -hmm. uh volcano here for the intro i want to So it kind of cuts it so you can see this i think it, this is most likely the third lfo that's uh what's this like called a ramp and so and it's going around the stereo stereo field as well as so it's it's kind of a subtle thing for it to be backwards and then when it comes right. Uh, 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 I did. I I really love this non-linear filter, uh, from Kilohertz. Right. So why do I love it? I love it because, so, uh, by definition, I think a non-linear filter is. I don't think it flips the phase of the thing that's filtering, so that's getting ran through it. Uh, but that's not the reason here. Uh, why I like it is because 
I think it's modeled to some really interesting, like to some in really interesting filters. And so when you, so you have these different modes here and different, uh, so this is what, like a cue for the resonance. And so as you move it, it, it moves and it sets a really, like really cool tone. You can get a really interesting tone. Right. So really cool and interesting tonal moments that it, and this is really, really nice when you, for example, put it, put the filter before some form of distortion or some form of, I guess, destructive processing, or at least like, um, processing that generates new harmonics and yeah, it, it, it just, it, it sounds really nice. It sounds really nice. And, uh, I automated the cutoff from time to time and only in the beginning. So here, right. So you can hear that, right. The volcano as well as the filter. Nice. Okay. Next empty, empty, empty. Uh, so these were some of, okay. So the originals, I think something from the, some random Foley from the original ones, but okay. I wanted it to be a bit more sludgy and wet. And so, yeah, this is a very high past delay, whatever. There's no, okay, that's it. And there, there's a bit of noise in the, in the original stem, so you can hear it. All right, next, kick, bass. Okay, so the original kick without anything. Uh, let me group this because I won't know what was on and off. Okay. Similar. Oh, uh, this is in the... You can see this is a bit more controlled. And I guess saturated, so I was adding in and I, this is my go to saturating plugin, um, rounding it up. Uh, I was, no, I wasn't smart here. I was actually, this, this was, uh, this has its intention. Uh, this audio effect rack here. So with this, I wanted to s simulate the kick it being like in a room. So when as when, when something is kind of in a room, it's not really the actual dry signal. And so the thing that comes after it, even though it's the same sample, it has more impact. And so I didn't want to put a Valhalla room or uh, Ableton's reverb or whatever, or I mean, I could have, but I wanted to simulate kind of an impression of a room. And so, um, yeah. I, I use this one knob drive that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and I filtered it a bit and whatever. Right. Next. Uh, honestly, aside from, again, this is all to taste. Um, I, I like this kilohertz transient shaper as I wanted to tame the, the low end from the initial one so you can hear it. Right, boom. And with this, right, controlled. Ghost kick. So, oh, okay, so I have a disperser that gets activated in this section later on. 
So the dispersor it acts. Um, honestly, I don't know the maths behind it, but it gives it this attack to the sample that's getting ran through it, especially if it's transient, and you can find like you can tune how that is going to act out. And yeah, I put a space modulator as I wanted, as this is intended to be a ghost kick. So it, if it were monoed up as the first one and had lower lows and whatever, it would have more punch to it, more weight. And I wanted this to be an addition to the thing that has to, you know, to have weight. Uh, I love, I really like this plugin. Um, Right, so as the this is reacting to the input signal and it's positioning it, right? Subtle, but it goes from left to right um, with each hit. Bass. So this bass, um, yeah. So my initial, I think I went and I tried to go with the guitar rig. Uh, let me see my time. Oh, I'm good. So, the initial one, mm, I tried to go the route of uh, guitar rig preset, but I ended up using the dry one, though I opted out by using, like, the main difference from the... Okay, so let me... Right, it's a sine wave of noise in it oh, it's getting again okay so it's heavily getting heavily okay so here i had to make a decision um and the decision was is that i had to sacrifice either the bass or the kick as kind of both were very weighty weighty in their like where they sat in the frequency spectrum and i mean i could have like and i tr i really tried to you know do some clever side chaining and whatever but it kind of it they they couldn't have the same uh roll together at the same time and so i decided to have the bass be the thing that's going to be thinned out uh this shapeshifter thing um is really nice as it's a tonal thing as well right it just pu it pushes everything up and I went a bit overboard with the thinning up part of the whole thing as, you know. So I went overboard by deciding to put it to be like the base for it to be stereo, which is, you know, a major no-no. But I think it fit here. Uh, debate me, whatever, but I think it fit here. And... Uh, yeah, the rates change from time to time, but I didn't really get super into my credits as I think it, it, it kind of differs from, I don't know, it, it's already stimulative, like the track is very stimulative as it is, but I didn't really go super, super into it. I think, yeah, this is... That's only subs here. Um, in the beginning and yeah I'm running it through All right spring reverb which is really nice and again you can see that I tried doing the monster dirty monster drum loop and I decided not to do it um, I'm, yeah I'm putting it to be dry dry here as the thing is uh closing out out yeah and i'm and i'm automating the rate here as it's closing out as well so that was a compositional stylistic choice uh here this whew.
Yeah, so this was, um, this is, uh, I think this is a group for the bass. Yeah, so I could have probably done this with the regular 808, but uh, I wanted to be smart. So, I mean, this sounds good, but so the way I did this is that if I could try, I mean, the main thing that's, that I'm, I'm doing here is, so I'm running the bass through this channel. I'm saturating the absolute shit out of it. Uh, okay, whatever. It's hard to to hear it. Actually, if I were to put this to sense only, and then okay, All right. So it's the same thing. So a cool trick is using drum bus and soloing out. So you have this thing to audition your lows, right? And you can leave it on. And here, from time to time, although even I ended up only using it um, in this fill and at the end, as you can see, I'm automating the um, on and off button. But yeah, here, you can, by automating the frequency, you can get different notes. And then I'm processing it with jump, bass, whatever compressor serum yeah so i'm adding up adding up harmonics and stuff but that would probably uh, take too much time this is a ghost kick side chain i'm probably side chaining this to various parts but uh, an another ghost kick okay Okay, uh, so this is a hat that's going in parallel with another preset and the Echo Cat for whatever, Catocalypse. Okay. All right. I think it's the same hat from earlier. Whatever. Uh, here I use the nonlinear filter to give it a tonal thing and to cut out the highs, but you can see that it kind of affects them in an interesting way that kind of cut out. Uh, okay, I'm losing my momentum. Uh, next, next, next. Hmm. All right. Uh, Next. So these were chops from the original, um, original stems and various effects and, and whatever I was using at the time. You can see me positioning it right this way. It's kind of too dry. Um, I'm doing a double, <laughs> a double uh, early reflection rodeo. Sorry. Uh, okay. And I think I'm using a comb filter. Yeah, so a comb filter to, you can kind of hear the higher frequencies that it adds on the sides. So let's listen to it with 
So, and without it, right? Why is it giving it? I have no idea, but combs are really cool. Um, like it's kind of giving a distortion, but it's not distortion. Oh my God. All right. Okay. Uh, good. Next. I don't know if uh, this could have been the same sample that I had there before, but here a bit of stereo processing and yeah, I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, here there's, there was no processing here. Uh, really cool impl like implementation or the w a way to use. God, I, I hope you're not hearing this. So a cool way, cool thing, way to use comb filters in general is kind of they introduce very small delays to stuff. So, right. Fuck. All right. As... We are good to go now. I can get back to... <laughs> I can get back to... Yeah, explaining... Not explaining cold filters by my... Ways of using it. So, the first part was... Yeah, so the first thing was... It kind of added a tonal thing and a distortion that's not distortion to it. And I really like that kind of way of thinking about my own stuff is I kind of, I really like using effects that are kind of give an illusion that another effect is getting applied to. So for example, if you were to distort something or right, you can use a distortion or you can use the, you know, something as such as like, right like volume stuff you know so that's an interesting stuff that can that you can think about uh okay so this gives it a bit of a delay uh i didn't end up using this okay why i do not know next 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 Okay. Mm. I'm very, my brain is working very hard now. I'm not sure why I would do this, but it worked. <laughs> so this is a completely on the sides. Okay, I wanted to reinforce the claps by... I'm using a frequency echo Right, so that, that makes sense. Okay. Um, as I'll probably lose too much time, I, I don't know how to. So these samples were made afterwards. And I made this by using the same technique of like me just processing stuff through the master and incorporating it back into this song. I don't have the exact chain, so my apologies. I do not, yeah, it kind of goes, kind of goes back um, with the stereo field and, and it opens up in these parts. 
Okay, uh, this is uh, from the initial stem. This is a sped up drum loop with a bit of reverb. Um, okay, this is loud, man. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, so the drum loop part and these stems here, they're, uh, you know, cut up and, and, and whatnot, I added a bit of mids. Again, I, I use this page modulator, you know, to position stuff differently in the mix. Um, has the name, um, I cut out the 10k part as it kind of felt redundant. Mm. Right. Subtle but important. Okay, so added in. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't want it for it to be probably too too harsh. Next is this. Okay, next. So this is the main part of the track. And I had to make decisions here. So obviously the main thing... Okay, so this is the initial loop and the initial arp that's cut out, right, into the rhythmical part. And let me quickly go... Okay, so aside from this, aside from it being side-chained... Uh, okay, so I had moments where the levels were probably too much, so I, instead of... Uh, being a more gentle, I, I cut, it out, cut them out with the limiter. Uh, this gets... Okay. Again, a lot of... Yeah. Of... So these are all mix stuff, like mix specific stuff, so explain them. Nice. Uh, so the wet chain that's happening here and the thing that you hear. So I'm automating the pitch of it. So here it's, it's playing an octaves from it. Right, it's getting granulized and pu pushed like by a fifth. Uh, I'm, I think I'm automating this somewhere. No, I'm not. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm doing it on, on a different channel. So, yeah. So this is giving me a little pad it doesn't sound too bad I, I really like it and especially the noise that this lossy plug is is, is adding it to it and it's kind of so this is everything is very granulated here and this lossy thing is removing the thing and, and it has kind of a gate that um, like allows stuff that goes through the gate and it defers it into and the way it processes it I think I'm not sure if it's like Fourier transforming it or what the exact term is but it's basically letting certain harmonics pass through the gate as you can see it visualized here 
so yeah it's probably dividing it into it's probably 256 here but whatever and it, there's a range to it whatever but i set the reverb here to post so it's affecting it and it's adding in noise okay so the there's not an actual gate here but whatever you can hear the effect and it's yeah it's getting side chained by nothing by itself no only compressed oh okay sorry i i rarely use the compressor without side chaining so yeah i'm, I'm actually compressing it and i'm removing the mids to to make room for the the main part so here and this is why i was looking for the automation part of this so i'm automating the pitch of this and i what well, i think i just automated by like i clicked record and blah blah uh, at this point i use our verb with this reso verb in this acts a similar way as um, the comb filter thing that I mentioned earlier it, it gives it kind of this you know these sparse reflections and what I, what I, what I like about this is it has certain moments right this is too much it's pushed too much but in the context of the mix and the way it gets glued together I think it has these little moments where it's tucks out of everything that's not too distracting and it gives it character it's cool um yeah and okay and here let's get back to the this long baby here and this is um these are parts of Don't crash, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. Good. So we won't touch the thing, but I don't think that it has any use, whatever. Okay, so I distort it. Oof. Hmm. Okay, so. So you can see me here, I, don't, I didn't even end up using this. So this is the dry loop. I'm mixing it in with a parallel thing. So I'm doing the same thing here as the gate is, is, is kind of making it get triggered and it accentuates certain points. What's giving it the sound is this. I just realized it's cool like this. And so here with this Uber mod, it's yeah, it acts as a chorus time-based effect here, and I really li liked the way it was interacting with it here. Aside from compression, a utility that gets activated at a certain point. Okay, so this one. So this one acts as the delay part. And do you have it? I'm yeah, automating various parameters, you know, uh, probably the rate, the delay that it's. I think it's offsetting them in between, but I'm not sure. Whatever. What I really like to do 
and you probably hear it now, right? That's a really cool thing. Like the warp function here with the speed thing. That's an industry secret. Diffusion? Is it even on? It is. So it's... Right. Bow. Right. I think it com comes about really cool in the end section. Uh, why are you not? Okay. Okay, I probably messed up something as I left it soloed out, right? I feel... And my serious apologies, but I'm really trying... Um, because this this was a really long ass project that I shouldn't have done probably uh, for this long like for why isn't it doing it? Okay, let me yeah, let me reload the plug the thing because it kind of it kind of fades out into this it, into this nice washed out thing. And at the end, uh, nice. And I want to show it to you. Come on, man. Okay. Okay, so it, it's actually drier than I thought, so it's probably this thing that's giving me the impression. Yeah. And with, with the... Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I thought that this part um, was affected in a bit more reverb in the end, but it's, it's just a volume fade with, with the initial loop here, which sounded cool, and I really like this... like this flangered part at the end and honestly aside from it it's just a lot of EQing um, this thing here which is <laughs> doing a lot uh, uh, side chaining it with the thing but again ex I think explaining it this way and that's why these track reviews are um, a bit you know, we would say ungrateful to do um, because the entire like thought process flow state part of the thing is, you know, very intuitive and reversing it and explaining it to people is it's it's often very difficult. Uh, OK, so I had this. Yeah, I don't even remember this, honestly. So this is the same thing. It's probably just a lot of CPU, but whatever. Effects. Uh, empty channels. Once more. Uh, I, yeah, I think this is very dry. This was me messing around at the ma on the master. Effects, more effects. I really like this when this part cut. This is like off key. Subtle, but important. 
Yeah, and these effects, they're not really... Oh, it's so hard. Yeah, uh, also on my, on my master, yes, I should probably should have mentioned that. And that's why everything's getting pushed. But actually, let me do that for last part. But yeah, these parts are just... I did a freeform recording moment on like by putting the whole thing through a master and they just recorded and added in the slice stuff subtle uh, okay this is oh nice like how it right that's that's nice uh and yeah i wanted so yeah i i removed this part here these are so these were the counterweight to the thing but i ended up not using them but this was intentional as as i mentioned earlier the bass and kick part had to be like something had to um take lead and i decided for it to be the kick and this was you know was not needed um my master here uh yeah so as i don't like you know, I, I i don't know how to master and like what traditional mastering is right but it's probably there, there isn't probably a you know a, a fixed thing but this was a product of you know th trial and error and you know thankfully it was a very mm, it, it was it's like a very simple chain uh, consisting of a compressor a bit of saturation as you can hear it's kind of rounding the thing up and a pro l that's only you know so it's not even getting it's just there to make sure that it's not going over one d like zero db uh and the honestly i think i just used the the the, the default values but oh actually i probably moved something is the little star here uh and yes that's that's the entire track uh yeah all right uh i have and I'm going to uh, render out these samples and put it and create like a Patreon for this channel. Uh, like the exact numbers and like what I'm going to provide like through there, through, there, through you know, plans and, and, and however you call them. Um, I have to think them like thoroughly through as well. But yeah, uh, samples from this track will be there and you know if you want to support me and my work uh you'll have everything there as well as you know more stuff more videos for sure um maybe some tracks i don't know like i don't know the specifics but it's definitely going to be a thing and i would really yeah i really appreciate your support that's it uh yeah, that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.